Hi, I'm Claire. In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to make a top-down knitted sweater with beads. I'll show you two different methods to thread the beads. I'll show you how to remove candle wax from your clothing and I'll show you how to make a little yarn holder using some key rings and knitting needle. So keep watching if you want to know how. And today I want to talk to you about a special jumper that's been on my needles for quite a while. So last year I discovered Lark Bagger. She is a Danish designer and she's got some very out there, avant-garde, crazy patterns. And her aesthetic is um, its not very me, but I just love looking at what she does. So I went and purchased her book, Close Knits, um, in the English version. She's actually got a Close Knits 2 coming out and um, it's just, I'm just waiting for the English version to come out. So I've knit a couple of things in here, but there's this one here, the Carpe Diem sweater really jumped out at me. Um, it's just a very simple raglan sweater, but she added lots of beads onto it. On her Instagram, I found she had a couple of other versions in which she used hammer beads as the bead. Um, she has a yellow version and a black version and a white version, I think, and I just loved it. So I thought I really needed one for myself. So I started. Of course, I chose pink. Um, this is something I started last year. Initially, I was very excited, knit heaps of it, and then other projects got in the way, and I put this down. One of the reasons is it's a little bit tedious to knit with, as you can imagine. I have to do beading, I have to catch the loops, um, and now that I'm onto Sleep Island, the turn is a lot smaller, so it's, it feels like it's even more work. But I'm now determined to finish this jumper, especially before the weather turns cold because I just can't wait to wear it. Okay, here's an overview of the jumper that I'm currently making. In the Close Knits book, Lark recommends knitting from the bottom up. She um, gave you a pattern that starts from here in the round, goes to the top and then knit the two sleeves up, join it and then knit it together. Now I personally like top down, especially I can see this is really heavy and it may drag the fabric with a lot of beading on it. So I wanted to knit it top down to gauge the length that it will eventually become. I also want a really cropped length, so having the full weight of the bead, trying it on as I go, I found it definitely a little bit more useful. And um, so currently this sits just around my belly button, slightly cropped, and the sleeves, I'm going to make it about my forearm length as well, because again, it's quite a lot, so I don't really want an oversized long jumper with a long hem and long sleeves. So um, the pattern I used was a free pattern from Espace Tricot. It's just a free standard top-down raglan sweater in a DK slash fingering weight. It's a very standard jumper. I used that as a guide, and all I did was put beads on every second row. There was a little bit of short rows in the back here to raise the back neckline. So just cast on here, a little bit of short rows, front and back and forth, and then just go from the top down. I didn't put any bees here in the raglan, thinking that it'll make a nice pattern. However, I don't think it does. This one here, because the other bees are facing in the right direction, they look really nice and tidy. But this one, it doesn't create a smooth line. So I'm not sure what to do here. I may have to go back in and fill in a few beads or maybe cut out a few beads just to make these two lines look a little bit nicer. Under the armhole, I also didn't put any beading down the two side seams. I think that looks okay. That's not too bad. I'm going to show you how I knit with beads on this Carpe Diem jumper. It's actually pretty easy. It is clearly detailed in Lark's book, Close Knits. Basically, you just knit a bead every second stitch on every other row. So when I finished doing my neck ribbing, I did a set, set up row where every second stitch I put in a bead. The next row will be a row where you just try to lock in those beads and so then they don't move around. And then you do another row of bead stitch, 
but this time you alternate. So if the first stitch you had a bead on, this one you're done putting a bead, and the second stitch you put on a bead. And now I will now show you how I do it. Okay, so the last round I did a bead on this stitch, so this time I'm going to do the beads on these ones, the alternate ones. So make sure I have a bead ready, pick up the stitch, and then loop the bead through. One without bead, and push one over. There's one, please. Do one with a bead, one without a bead. One stitch with a bead, one without. It's a bit awkward to hold the strand with all these beads on there and you also have to ensure there's a little bit of gap like all the beads are not stuck together because then you won't have enough yarn to do the actual stitch so spacing is also something that I have to constantly watch out for this one has oh, come here. this one has a bead so you can see the bead comes through the loop and then sits in front of the stitch in front of the needle as well not behind the needle and then the next row, we're going to be securing the bead so it doesn't slide around or go to the back of the garment. Um, by making sure the bead sits in the front of the garment, of course it looks a lot neater, the bead sits in the front, it doesn't sit in the inside and um, it feels more comfortable. See, if you look on the inside, there's no beading at all. If I run my hand over it, it doesn't scratch because everything is on this side. You can see I need to push the beads down a little bit because there's not enough yarn for me to knit with. So I just push a whole bunch of beads down, further down the line so I have a bit of room. So usually I hold maybe about three beads here in my hand. One stitch without, one stitch with. And my nails match perfectly with this color that I'm knitting. One with, come here, one with, one without, one with, one without. Now when I ordered the beads, initially for some reason I only ordered 2,000, thinking, oh 2,000 is plenty of beads, that should be enough for a whole jumper. And as soon as I started knitting, maybe just um, a little bit after the short rows of the neck, I realized there's, there's definitely not enough. I was already about a third way, a third of the way through the 2,000 beads. So I went back online and ordered another 10,000. And then I also did some research on Instagram to look at a few other people who has made this jumper um, and the colors they used. I found that the designer and a couple of other people, they used um, different shades of the pink with some special beads. So I ordered a lighter color as well, um, which is this one here. I ordered a lighter color as well, which I think gives a bit of dimension and then just sprinkle some special different kinds of beads in there, um, which makes it a little bit more interesting. However, I have to remember never iron this jumper. Um, because these beads are hammer beads, which you know kids use to make little um, animations or pictures on a board, and then they iron it and make it into a per permanent plastic board. So if I iron this jumper, all of these beads will be melted, and it'll be a big puddle of mess. So yes, note to self: never, never, never iron this jumper. I don't even know how I'm gonna wash it because some of these cheap beads, I think the color will just come off in the wash. So yeah, we'll see how we go. So that was a little bit fast. Let me show you how I knit again a bit more slowly. First stitch, no bead. Yep. Second stitch, I push this bead down and then I go and pull up the through the loop above that bead and then pull the bead through the loop. So it actually came inside the loop. Third stitch, no bead. Fourth stitch, I push this bead down all the way to the bottom here. And then I go in and pick up a stitch above the bead. And then I pull out the yarn with the bead. So that goes, the bead goes inside the loop and now it's forward in front of the fabric. 
There we go. One without a stitch. Bead down. One with a bead. Pop. You may need all of your fingers to help with these. So I've got these other fingers are holding the needles. Four finger pushing the bead down. Pull the loop through. This four fingers pushing the bead through the hole to make sure it definitely goes in. There you go. Okay. okay, so that's the beading row done. The next row will be a plain row. I use two strands, one with beads, one without. The reason is the second row, I don't use any beads. Um, when I initially started, I just used the one strand and I find for every second row, I have to push these all the way down, which was taking a lot of time, especially if I had threaded a lot like I did here. So now every second row, I just use the alternate skein, which doesn't have beads and makes it a lot faster. Okay, so we're back to the beginning. Where's my stitch marker? There's my stitch marker there. It's one from La Gasson when I ordered one of their Christmas mystery boxes a couple of years ago and I just love it. Got three of these and they're so cute. I love um, Vincent and Max's aesthetics. Okay, now we're ready for row two. So this row is the locking round. So I can see this, I've got beads on every alternate stitch. Um, so to lock these things place I knit it from the back loop second one just a normal knit the one with the beads knit from the back loop this just um the twisted stitch oops what am I doing I split the stitch the twisted stitch helps to lock it in place so the bead doesn't slide around because sometimes they do want to slide to the back of the jumper and sometimes they want to slide in between the two stitches and by doing this, it really helps to make it a little bit tighter. It makes the stitch tighter and doesn't let the stitch slide around. You can see when I was doing the beading, I was using my left hand to hold the yarn and for the right, I mean for this row, I use my right hand to hold the yarn. Um, I just find it a little bit easier to do knit through the back loop when I'm doing the English method. And when I'm holding the bead, I found it a lot easier if I was doing the continental, holding the beads on my left. So this is the rhythm that I have established. Also, you can see when I'm knitting, I kind of hold the bead down to stop it from sliding around, just to give it a little bit more security. I'm going to show you now how to thread the beads. But first, let's put a bit more dark pink in there because we're running a little bit low. I put all my beads in an Oreo tin. Like all crafters, tins are the best thing to keep all your sewing equipment in. I have a little magnet on the lid of the tin just to hold on my needles. So you can see this here is a beading needle with a large hole through the middle. I'm going to use this one as my first method for threading the, the beads. You just put the yarn through the large hole of the needle there, making sure I've pulled out a long string of yarn to hold all the beads. And then when I start, So I just poke through the tin and get as many beads as I can onto the needle. This is not very hard, it's just norm normal beading. I think for me the art here is to get the right proportion. So through the body I would put in um, mainly the dark pink beads, about seven to eight pink beads and then a light pink bead followed by perhaps a special bead. That's one of these um, crystal balls or a pearl or a seed, seed bead. Uh, in a body, I did that for around every seven to 12 beads and that gave a really nice marble look. 
However, now that I'm on Sleeve Island, it is important I don't put them so close together. Otherwise, the special beads will pull. Um, the distance, or well, the circumference of the sleeves is a lot smaller than the body. So now I am adding a special bead every 15 to 20 beads. And a light pink bead, maybe once every, every 20 or so. That helps to give me similar proportion to that of the body, so there aren't too many special beads on the sleeves. Once I've got a fair number of beads on my needle, I just push it down to the thread and keep them on the thread to be ready to be knitted. Generally, I would um, add quite a few beads on there, maybe around 50 to 60. It is a little bit heavy to keep it like that, and as you're knitting, you have to keep pushing it down. So I don't really do my, I don't really do many more than that. I think 50 to 60 gives me a comfortable amount to start working with. Can you see the beautiful effects the special beads has created on the body? That light pink adds a little bit of dimension, and those special sparkly beads just add a little bit of something something I think to the top, and yeah, it just looks spectacular. Now I'll show you how I reattach the yarn to the working thread. So, oh, there's my needle. I was looking for it. Better keep that safe. I've got the new piece of yarn with lots and lots of beads on there. And I've got a short bit which is still attached to the sleeve. And uh, I use a magic knot method. I find this very secure and I don't have to worry about um, beads coming loose because that would be my worst nightmare, beads falling off. Magic knot, you can find them on the internet. Basically, the two yarns are facing each other, and I tie one end around the body of one, and then same to the other body. Pull it really tight, and look, that's not coming apart. Uh, I always make sure there's some larger hammer beads that's close to the knot, because they can easily slip over the knot, where some of the special beads you cannot. And the ends, I would just weaving in the end, or push it into the inside. One sleeve is almost done. Now I just got to figure out the length that I want. I want it to be about mid forearm. So what I did here is actually use my nails to make a mark on my arm and then measure the distance. Not something I recommend, but it was really quick and effective. A quick close up. I really, really like it. Do you like it? It's really coming together so nicely. So I've been working on the Carpe Diem all weekend and managing the two balls was driving me crazy. So I hacked my key rings and made two little yarn holders. Here they are here. They definitely help to manage the two balls because I can twist them around easily. So one of them is simply a pair of shorties, two yarn stoppers and a key ring with a swivel bottom. See, so simple. So I just dab the two needles into my ball of yarn, right in the middle there. And then I put the yarn stoppers on so they don't fall off. I bought some magnetic hooks which will um, magnetize to my little cupboard to the side there. And I hang my keyring on there. And look, it perfectly swivels and holds the yarn. So simple. Love it. I finished the first sleeve, so I'm giving it a quick try on while I'm working on the second. My son is having some friends over for his 11th birthday. They are so loud. I really do not recommend anyone to have half a dozen 11 year olds in their house. However, he had a great birthday with a beautiful cake made by our good friend, Auntie Jess. I was just trying to clean out a candle and um, it was all stuck to the bottom of the bowl. So I tried to put on the stove top to melt the wax so I can cling my bowl 
but that did not work very well because the water started popping the wax everywhere and now I have a big globule of green wax on my Nanya top. It's pure silk, so I don't know how I'm going to get this wax out. Hopefully it doesn't stain my white pants too. White pants too. Great job, Claire. Come on, all the way down my legs. Great job, Claire. I read online the best way to get rid of wax out of clothing is use a bit of paper towel and try and put it over the wax bits, give it an iron, and hopefully the wax will melt and transfer onto the paper. Let's hope it works because I'm going to be soaking this overnight. Later that night, the 11 year olds are still screaming upstairs and I've run out of yarn. With only about a dozen rows to go, I'm going to need to break into a whole new skein to finish the yarn. Frustrating, but it's got to be done. While I've got a winder out, I might as well wind up the yarn for my next project. This is a beautiful baby duckling yellow mohair alpaca combination. It is just delicious. You'll have to watch my next video to find out what I'm making with it. Now most people may not have a beading needle at home, so I'll show you how to use a normal sewing needle to thread your beads. So you just grab a piece of thread, you fold the thread in half, and using the loop, you thread it into your normal sewing needle. I've got another video that shows you how to thread any needle in under two seconds, so make sure you check that out afterwards. So you've got a loop here on one side of the needle, right? And the other side is loose. So just be careful and don't let the thread off the needle as you are beading. Basically, you just thread that yarn into the loop, fold that in half, and give a little bit of a fold back so it doesn't easily fall out of your thread loop. Then you just thread on your beads as normal and push it all the way down through your sewing thread and then through the yarn. See how easy that is? Just do it again. Put a few more beads onto your needle and then just gently push it all the way down the thread past my yellow sewing thread that you can see. Oh, let me just thread a few more. Past the sewing thread and then it'll go smoothly past the yarn. Easy peasy. Of course, the only thing to watch out for is not to get beads that are so small that you won't fit over your yarn. But otherwise, most threads and needles will work perfectly with this method. It's past 11. My son's friends have finally fallen asleep. Now I can live in peace while doing a little bit of cycling under the desk there. All right, my Nanya has been soaking overnight in some nappy sand and now it's dried. I think it turned out pretty well. If you look really closely, you can see a little bit of green waxy here and a little bit here. But overall, I am so glad it is not ruined because I love this top. Phew, never playing with colored wax again. Last night I finished my jumper, yay! But before I try it on, there's still some finishing touches to add. As you can see in the raglan increases, there are some bees that are not supposed to be there. I accidentally um, added them on while I was knitting. So what I'm going to do, kids, don't try this at home, 
is try to cut it out with my trusty pair of scissors. So of course you have to be really careful not to cut the yarn that's underneath, otherwise there'll be a lot of fixing up to do. Luckily the hammer beads are pretty soft, so I just cut out a few stray ones that are not supposed to be where they are. And there you have it. I have finished my Carpe Diem sweater. Just a recap, I used a sparse trico pattern called Bright Side. It's a very basic um, raglan style top down jumper um, for a fingering weight. So you start the neckline ribbing, a little bit of short rows across the back to raise the back neck. And there it's just um, round and round you go, increases for raglan, sleeves on hold, finish the body, pick up the sleeves and finish the sleeves. And the only thing I did differently for this jumper according to the bright side pattern was to add beads every other row. And I, now you know how to add beads to your jumper as well. Please give it a go. And if you have any questions, leave a comment down below and I'll try my best to answer. And if you like this video, like and subscribe. And make sure to turn your notifications on to see the latest videos.